Many patients have questions about treatments that are available to control pain, both with arthritis and after knee replacement, things such as geniculate nerve blocks, geniculate nerve ablation, geniculate artery embolization, aloe vera cold treatments, um, even femoral adductor sciatic nerve blocks that we do during surgery. And I'm gonna cover all of those in today's video. Hello and welcome back. I'm Adam Rosen. Thanks again for tuning in. If you could take a moment right now and click the thumbs up and subscribe button if you enjoy this content, it does really help the channel. In today's video, I'm going to really talk about kind of three topics. I'm going to talk about the nerve blocks that we did use and now use during knee replacement surgery. And then I'm going to cover some other treatments that can be used both for knee arthritis as well as before and after knee replacement surgery. So in the first section, let's talk about blocks. So years ago, we used to typically do general anesthesia. You would go to sleep, you would wake up, you'd be screaming in pain. It was pretty miserable. And for a lot of times, uh, what we used to also use was spinal and epidurals, but it was back in the day when you had a Foley catheter in your bladder because you couldn't pee and you were in bed for 24, 48 hours. It wasn't a very aggressive rehab and patients didn't do so well. So we started transitioning over to blocks. And one of the first blocks that I and many surgeons used uh, with the help of anesthesia was what was called a femoral sciatic block. So this is through the front. Um, they would block with numbing medicine the area around the femoral nerve, which controls sensation over the front of the leg, but it also controlled the quadriceps muscle. It basically paralyzed it. And then they would pass the needle further and inject numbing medicine around the sciatic nerve, which again, really helped block the pain well, but it densely blocked a particular part of the sciatic nerve called the perineal branch, which controls your foot. So a lot of patients would wake up from surgery and have a foot drop. And as a surgeon, we're wondering, did we do something during surgery to damage the nerve? Or is this a result of the nerve block? And sometimes that would last for three days and we would wait very scared, wondering whether or not that nerve function was going to come back. So very quickly, Many surgeons abandoned that idea. Um, the other downside of that is it worked so well that many patients didn't take pain medicine. And then when the block wore off, they had what we call rebound pain. And we treat pain very differently now where we give medicine prior to surgery and scheduled medicine around the clock, which prevents the rebound effect that we used to see when the blocks did wear off. Now, what people started doing is going to the femoral blocks, but again, because it paralyzed the muscle, a lot of patients had difficulty difficulty doing physical therapy. So very frequently you would get out of bed, the knee would buckle and therapy would put you in a knee immobilizer. Didn't really help patients mobilize well. So what people transitioned over to and what is probably the most frequent nerve block that surgeons use for knee replacement surgery is what's called an adductor canal block. So this really does help control a lot of the pain of the thigh and knee but it doesn't affect the muscle. So if your muscle's weak, typically it's because of the surgery or because of the tourniquet if it was used, but very rarely does this block affect the muscle function, but it does help with pain control. And many patients can get pain control for about 24 hours, depending on the amount and type of anesthetic that is used. Most frequently, this is a single shot, although some anesthesiologists will use a catheter and they'll slowly infuse the numbing medicine the problem is that some people can get inflammation of the nerve called neuritis or the catheter can break, cause all sorts of other problems. So most frequently, this is given in what we call a single shot dose. And that's the most common nerve block that we use around the time of surgery to help control pain and symptoms after surgery. The next pain management technique I wanna to talk to you about is specifically with regards to the geniculates, both the geniculate nerves and the geniculate arteries. So one option for patients that either have pain due to arthritis, or for some patients that even have pain after knee replacement, is to do a geniculate nerve block. And what this is, is a pain management doctor will identify the different geniculate nerve branches, which are nerves around the knee that control sensation and pain, and they will inject numbing medicine. Now, Typically, this is a test. This is temporary. The numbing medicine does wear off, but the question is whether or not the patient sees relief from this procedure. And if it offers them temporary relief, we call that a positive test. In those instances, if patients do have relief, but are looking for more long-term relief, 
sometimes the pain doctors will go back and do what's called a geniculate nerve ablation. So they will actually go in and ablate the nerves. This is a procedure that's commonly used in the back for pain due to compression of the spinal nerves. And again, it's temporary. The nerves do regrow, so the nerve function will come back, but it will lessen pain and it will last for a while for some patients for many, many months. Now, another option that some patients have been asking about lately is what's called a geniculate artery embolization. So again, the geniculates are a series of structures around the knee joint. There are nerves and there are also arteries and the arteries supply blood to the areas and structures around the knee. And what some studies have found is that if you can go in and embolize the arteries around the knee, that it can help reduce pain. And again, this is used in patients that have pain from arthritis or for patients that have pain after knee replacement and it's been refractory to other treatments. So these are three options that may be available to you. A geniculate nerve block, which is temporary, a geniculate nerve ablation, which is more long-term, or a geniculate artery embolization procedure. Okay, the last thing that I wanna to talk to you about for completeness sake um, is something that I have not used, but something that I was interested in and looked into a couple of years ago when I first saw it at one of our annual meetings. Um, and this is cryotherapy by um, a company called Iovera. And what this is is a wand um, that uses cold treatment to ablate the nerves. And by deadening the nerves, it decreases pain. Now this might be used in the setting of pain from knee arthritis. Um, or what a lot of surgeons are doing is doing this treatment in the office prior to surgery so that patients get pain relief after surgery. So when they ablate the nerve with this cold treatment, the nerves will regrow over time. So again, this is temporary. But if you're having surgery, um, this should get you through that acute pain phase after the operation and might lessen the need for heavy duty narcotics that would be used to control pain after surgery. So I hope you've found this video interesting. Tried to cover all of the different blocks that we use uh, during surgery, as well as treatments that we use for controlling pain from arthritis. If you've had experience with any of these techniques, uh, leave a little note in the comment section. Let others know what you thought of the treatment that you had. Did it work? Did it not work? If it lasted, how long did it last? Um, and as always, thanks again for watching. Until next time, stay safe.